you can see right there that's where the knock sensor bolts up to you can see what I had to take off in order to replace the knock sensor all that had to come back back off including the water pump all right guys so I found out where I got that torque spec from where I degraded it in episode 16 where I torqued this uh, knock sensor to the head I saw myself do a plus 90 um, this is where that came from I got it from my gen 3 manual uh, this is a gen 2 Let's see with our actual engine code it should be 20 newton meters and again um, we are dealing with a knock sensor that's got 158,000 miles on it so alright guys we got our knock sensor installed and the water pump back on I'm pretty sure my, I screwed up the recording of getting this thing back on um, again this is a very tricky thing to get a video of that bridge connection between the water pump and the oil cooler that just slides in horizontally um, but you also have this belt you're not supposed to remove that bottom bolt on that cog that's that reverse thread tapered uh, metric bolt that you are not supposed to reuse it's a, it's uh, when you torque that on it's a torque to it's you degree that so that's a torque to yield you can just unbolt the water pump first pull it away from the block to where it's loose enough to where you can wiggle the belt off but getting the water pump back in you want to get the water pump more or less in position um, get it around get the belt around the pulley and then slide it into the oil cooler with that bridge piece and you can just barely see there's a little dowel it's focusing on the bolt but to the very left of the bolt recessed in the back that's the tip of the dowel on the right side and kind of the same thing you can see that dowel on the left side now again you want to be wary of your of the seals on the back of the water pump um, they are just o-rings but they are recessed fairly good into the lands um, but again it's one of those things where you you just can't you can't see it as you're installing it you can use a bore scope or a mirror and, and just right before you get it to to mount to the block and just kind of take a peek back there to make sure everything's where it's supposed to go so hardest parts done guys getting that water pump off messing with that belt um, and of course doing the knocks I mean the knock sensor itself isn't that hard it, it's this the water pump is probably the most tricky part and of course taking everything off without breaking anything that was just the run with the new knock sensor installed another two three four thousand rpm sustained sustained speed run um, you can see right off the bat uh, this is the new run 2040 rpm we grabbed a timestamp from that point and this is the old run 
2040 RPM. Uh, the largest difference we're seeing between the new run and the old run are the knock voltages. The AFRs are commanding almost the same. We're maintaining that. Um, the fuel pressure specification, the charge air specification, uh, even the ignition angle, of, uh, we're all, it's almost identical across the board compared to the old run to the new run. Uh, again, nothing very significant that doesn't result from the position of the accelerator. Uh, let's move up to 3000. We can see the same thing. Uh, the old run was a little steadier. These are the old knock sensor uh, voltage readings compared to the new knock sensor voltage readings. You can see our speed is even identical between the old and the new runs. So it's always best to try to mimic your runs uh, when you're troubleshooting. I think this was probably the closest run. We're at 20.4% on the accelerator on the new run and 192 on the uh, old run. We, we want to start looking at the exhaust gas temperature in the manifold. This is the old run compared to the new run. Again, no real significance there. We're not seeing anything out of the ordinary. Even though our knock sensors are, the knock sensor was off, it really does not affect or make that significant of a difference uh, in drivability at these speeds and under these conditions. Again, we were really only having issues on the higher RPM. So we'll move up to 4,000. And again, getting a bit redundant at this point, guys. We're not seeing any, any, any real change aside from uh, our knock readings from old compared to new. finally we made some power we had a clean run through second gear uh, we didn't start breaking up till the top of third this is the new run and this is the old run from the last video we're going to look a little bit more at that one compared to the new one uh, but let's focus on the new one for now now again we're dealing with the latency of my uh of my solace so right back to where we were full throttle you can see our ignition timing drops to 4.5 advanced. Um, the big difference between this run and the previous run, again, we have our knock voltages are higher where, where they should be, and we do not have a baseline uh, retard on our ignition. We'll just glance over to the old one. You can see right away when we went full throttle, a little bit of, of a data differential here uh, because this, this picked up a timestamp at 3120, not 3400, but you can see right away we picked up that 10 degree uh, retard on the ignition. It's pulled back negative six degrees versus advanced 4.5. So let's move down to uh, our AFR. This is our AF, uh, the air fuel ratio, the actual. It is commanding 0.98. That's very close to just a one to one ratio. That enriches when we get to a higher RPM. Uh, camshaft adjustment, we advanced eight degrees uh, compared to the previous run. We're, we're only at 7.5, not a huge difference there at this point. Again, we're at a lower RPM on the old run. And you can see at 3,400 RPM, we're already making about 9 PSI of boost. Again, you got to do, you subtract your uh, atmospheric 
So you've got 1620 minus 995. Multiply that by that. You're at about 9 PSI. But the ECM is commanding like 17 PSI, which, which is nice, but it's a very small turbo. And these engines really only make about 12 to 13 pounds in stock form on that little KO3. So comparing where our charge pressure is on the old one, again, we're only at 3120 at this point. We're barely making anything. Let's move up to the next point that we get data from. So 5,000 RPM. There's a lot that go that a lot happened between 3,400 and 5,000 RPM, but I can say from the driver's seat, it was very smooth. It, it had a good pull. It was a strong pull. I didn't feel any hiccups whatsoever. And we can see in the graphs, this was more or less a healthy run. So at 5,000 RPM, we're still full throttle. What's the next thing to look at? Uh, our ignition angle, we've advanced uh, about 16 degrees compared to where we were was down to four and a half so now we're advanced 16 degrees we didn't have any misfires we didn't have any issues so so far the ecm's happy uh our fuel mixture has enriched down to about 11 we'll just do the math so about 11.9 to 1 is what it's commanding now you can see our camshaft advance isn't changing much. It increased slightly one degree. Nothing really to talk about there. Uh, our charge pressure, we're up to about 11 pounds. Uh, we can see our exhaust manifold uh, temperature obviously is getting a little higher. So let's move up to uh, the next stamp of information we've got at 6,240 RPM again. A ton of useful data we do not have, so we're still full throttle. Uh, ignition has dropped off slightly back down to 8 degrees. This was the top of 2nd. The, the car shifts from 2nd to 3rd about 6,500 RPM. We have a drop in ignition timing, but we have a leaner enrichment request for from the ECM, but not by much. Again, it's closer to the one-to-one -one ratio, closer to 14, seven to one. Uh, the camshaft timing drops off a few degrees and we make just a, a little bit less boost. Because of the RPM we're at on this run with the engine running healthy, this is normal to see because the ECM is actually commanding less. Volumetrically, the engine's actually consuming more air at this RPM than the turbo can efficiently feed it um, now it's still compressing the air, but you do feel a little drop off at the at the top of the rev range, and that's characteristic to these to these engines in stock form. Now we see four little misfires. Did we pull timing because of those misfires? Did we pull cam? Did, did we pull a degree because of those misfires? Possibly. If there if these were the only misfires we got, I, I really wouldn't be able to do anything with this data it's just we had we had more on the, on the top end of third and again we'll, we'll get into that here in a minute but for now we will just we'll acknowledge these and unfortunately we are missing some crucial data to really track down the cause of that but taking a glance around fuel pressure is fine uh, intake air temperature is fine nothing ranged high low or out of spec that we can see anyway Again, the exhaust gas temp's getting a little up there. It's actually lowered slightly from the highest point, but only by about, only by 10 degrees. We're about done looking at the top of the second gear pole. But those little misfires, I did not even feel from the driver's seat. I was surprised to even see that. Uh, but let's let's move ahead a little. Um, now the engine had, we shifted into third, still full throttle. This is the next data stamp we have. The engine's at 48. 4680 in third gear. So it, ignition advanced back up nine degrees. It hasn't detected any more misfires. It hasn't gone into a limp mode or anything. Suddenly our boost spiked back up, more or less because we're back in, a, in the operating range of the turbocharger. We enrich in the fuel mixture. So now we're wanting to see about 10.8, 10.9 to one. 
So why is it enriching down to like 10.9 compared to the, almost the 11.9 it was at previously? So we are making more boost, but again, that doesn't necessarily mean we need to run a richer mixture. It's running a mixture, a richer mixture, mostly because of there's more potential for for predetonation. There's more heat in the in the cylinder at this point because it knows what speed we're going. It knows that we're making more boost, more more more. When you compress air, it heats up, and when you compress already compressed air even further, it heats up exponentially. That and there's there's considerable more load on the engine because again you're increasing drag. The faster you're going, the more heat you're creating. Uh, and again, you can see the difference here. I mean, we're only making about 11 pounds here, and we're asking for a a 12 to one. So now we're making 12 and a half pounds here. So we're asking for 11 to one. So what's happening with more fuel? Well, you know, fuel in a homogeneous state is, is still a liquid, so you do have a, a slight evaporative cooling effect because you're in, adding more fuel. It wants to see more fuel and less air. So adding more fuel to a superheated cylinder of air is actually cooling it down slightly and re reducing a po possibility of predetonation. But as a result of that, what's not happening? We're running a richer mixture, and our exhaust gas temperatures are not have not really moved that much, have they? As far as EGTs are concerned, this is a pretty smooth run. So in a stock trim, it's it's not all about just chasing that perfect AFR. There's a little more going on here, and we can see that in uh, the results of our old run with the bad knock sensor, which is obviously wreaking havoc on the ECM. You can see a slight starting to spike it's starting to peak and this is only at 5280 at the top of second gear at only 50 miles an hour the boost is pretty much just stagnated you could see yes we're commanding a significantly richer uh, air fuel ratio even at this point but you can see what happens when the egts begin to rise we go even richer in trying to resolve that it's it is actually causing misfires Let's move on to the next change we uh, we are able to observe. So we go from 4680 to 5320. Still don't have any misfires. We've got a strong pull. So the engine's happy. It's it's requesting more timing. The fuel ratio has remained the same. The AFR has remained the same. We already discussed why. Uh, it advanced the cam back up to about 9 degrees. Advance. Uh, boost pressure's dropped off ever so slightly again we're we're leaving the efficiency range of the compressor and you can see egts were actually dropped a little bit everything seems to be running fine as far as the ecm is concerned and as far as what we can see our next change goes from 5320 to 5800 suddenly we've picked up 41 misfires so what's going on on our graph here we advanced the ignition ever so slightly and leaned out the mixture just a little bit, nothing significant. Didn't do anything to the camshaft. Uh, boost lowered a little bit more because, again, it's being requested. But you can see something different on this run. So let's look at our old run. The old run, we've got with a bad knock sensor, we got 59 misfires. It's pulling timing, it's enriching the fuel mixture. Uh, boost isn't really doing much anyway at this point. Um, it's not doing much with the camshaft either. But what we're seeing as a result of this improper management because of the bad knock sensor is the increase in exhaust gas temp at only 5,200 RPM and in a considerable more amount of misfires. So let's jump over to the new one. Well, here we are at the top of third. We're going about 80 miles an hour, still foot to the floor. Engine RPM at this point is 5,800 at the top of third. So we're seeing 41 misfires. We're not retarding ignition. We're not enriching the fuel mixture. We're leaning out the fuel ever so slightly. That's not that big of a deal. And again, like we mentioned, the turbo is not doing much at this point effectively. So it's, it's dropping anyway. But what are we seeing on the EGTs? It's dead smooth. We don't have an increase in exhaust gas temp. Whereas before we did. So why are we misfiring? Let's talk about octane. You got, let's use the two most common octanes everyone talks about. 87 octane and 93 octane. Well, what is octane? Octane is the resistance to combustion, the resistance to detonation. Not the flash point, but the auto ignition 
of the fuel. So 87 octane, it technically is a more volatile fuel than 93. 87 octane will auto ignite under a lower temperature than 93. So what are you doing in a, in a, in a, in an engine? You're compressing air. Well, what does air do when it, when it compresses? It heats up. So when you're running a higher compression engine and you have a more volatile fuel that will auto ignite at a lower temperature, you run the risk of that mixture, that air fuel mixture igniting before the spark plug is commanding it to. So they put knock sensors on the motors that act as stethoscopes for the ECM. It can hear the heartbeat of the, of the engine and adjusts fuel and timing accordingly. So on the old run, we were seeing the reaction and result of engine knock. But on the new run, we just have misfires. So the point of what I'm getting to in our situation is this is not knock related. Why did we misfire at the top end of third gear and not second gear? What's the only difference? Drag. The motor's working harder. Well, what does that equate to? More heat in the cylinder. What else is increasing our intake air temperature? Over here, we're at about 105, 104, and up here, up to here, by the time we see our misfires, we're at 109. So even though, yes, we're increasing heat, we're not, we're not showing any potential for knock on our screen here. We're just showing misfires. So that can mean we actually have the potential for a latent ignition, which is ignitions that detonations actually happening slightly after the spark plug is going off, which means we're having incomplete combustions in the cylinders due to a potential low quality of fuel. If you remember, I had pulled about five gallons out. We had about eight gallons of fuel stagnant in this uh, fuel tank with the, tr with the car sitting for two years. So there was about three gallons left. I've since filled it to the brim with 93 octane, but that's still uh, th what's left over in the tank mixed with good fuel may still be causing an issue on the top end. So the causality behind why, the, why is it breaking up the top of third, not the top of second is we're commanding volumetrically more fuel to actually be in that cylinder. So again, we're between 0.78 and 0.75, whereas in the top of second, we're between uh, 0.95 and 0.82. So with all things considered, um, I'm leaning towards in the conditions we're in and what's being demanded of the fuel, I don't believe it, it has the potential energy in it from the contamination of the three gallons of whatever was left in that fuel tank. So guys, to wrap this up, by the end of our third gear pull, we had a total of 82 misfires. We're in full deceleration at the moment, so the numbers really don't mean much at this point. So moving forward, forward from this, I've been driving the car back and forth to work about every other day. I'm going to try to burn off as much fuel as I can uh, and then get a good full tank of fresh 93 and just try the run again. Uh, we'll wind out the top of third. We'll do a 3,000 RPM pull from third, uh, starting in third this time to see how the engine reacts that way. So guys, thanks again for watching. I'm having a lot of fun doing this stuff. In the future, I hope to get a better log logging device that can keep up. But uh, we'll see you on the next video.